Mm. Well, I'd give an arm for one sip, and I certainly wouldn't miss the arm now that I've been put out to pasture. Oh, darling, I am sorry. But children, perhaps we're wrong to indulge ourselves when poor Edward is so restricted. Ah, nonsense, darling. The only pleasure I have left is watching others. I've become an observer, a voyeur. I just sit back, watch others, and remember how it was to be active. You know, maybe that's why I'm so fascinated by uh, Tracy and Mitch Williams. My dear, I'm afraid I don't follow you. Why should Tracy and Mr. Williams fascinate you? Well, because they're doing something. Tracy's molding a career for that man out of publicity and personal appearances that wouldn't get anybody else elected dog catcher. They're active and productive. I agree that they're on the move, but that doesn't make them interesting. Personally, I find them totally self-centered and boring, and I was very grateful when they left after dinner. All they can do is talk about themselves and what they are doing. Yeah. Say what you will, but Tracy set out to accomplish something, and she won't stop until she's done it. I find that fascinating to watch. You know, I never fully realized how very much like my father Tracy really is. Stop it, don't you mean, darling? Yeah, call it what you like. He always came out on top. Perhaps I was wrong to overlook Tracy when she wanted to join the firm. Maybe I wouldn't be so worried about things now if she were running it. I'm glad she isn't. She probably would have chucked it all and gone off to Albany to promote Mitch's career. And then all holdings would have gone straight down the drain. Oh dear, must we talk about business and politics? Surely there must be a more pleasant, to pleasant topic of conversation. Uh, like the, uh, the house that Alan bought you for Christmas. Now. Before I leave to close up the house in, in uh, Palm Beach, I really would love to help you with it, Monica. Well, you know, I'd be delighted to have you, Lana. I can use all the help I can get. <laughs> I have some wonderful plans for the nursery. Well, you better wait for a baby to get in there. We might wind up with the wrong color. <laughs> <laughs> My dears, I believe in long-distance planning. And I'm superstitious enough to believe that if you want something, you can really get it by barging in. So, I think the nursery should be blue for a boy. <laughs> What's so funny about wanting a grandson? Uh, nothing, darling. I was just thinking of somebody else's reaction. <laughs> Mother, would you like a little coffee? Uh, no, thank you, dear. What about you, Dad? Oh, that loud, Doctor? A little. <laughs> tell you that when you ran out of the car and headed down toward the water in the dark here, I was afraid you might have done something very foolish. Because I was so relieved as when I saw you down in the surf. Well, maybe it would have been a lot better for everybody if you hadn't found me. You have said a lot of wonderful things tonight, but that is without a doubt the craziest thing you've ever said in your life. Is it, Rick? Darling, what's wrong? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Oh, thank you again, my darlings. It was such a lovely evening. Well, we enjoyed it. You sleep well. Thank you. Good night, my dear. Good night, Mother. And now that you're in the suite downstairs, please don't hesitate to call me if you need anything. It's no trouble. He's referring to me, I'm sure, the invalid. I wasn't referring to you at all. But now that you mention him, do you have your digoxin with you? And my nitroglycerin pills, and according to Rick's orders, they're never to be out of my reach day or night. That's right. You just keep them by your bedside when you turn in. I always do. Good. Well, good night again, my darling. Mm -hmm. And I do hope that before I leave Florida, we'll have time for a nice, long, private chat. I shall make the time, I promise you. Are you all right, my dear? Yes, I am, Mother, really. I think I'm still adjusting to... Getting back to the normal life again. Oh, it must have been just awful being locked up in the hospital all those weeks. Surrounded by suffering and misery. Yes, it was. Well, I want you to put it all behind you now. You know, I've been very worried about you, my dear. Because you seem to, um, I don't know, you seem to drift off into a private world sometimes. <laughs> right in the middle of a conversation. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever it is, I have something to worry about. 
Lila, darling, mm -hmm. will you say goodnight once more and mean it so I can get to bed? Yes, dear. Yes. <laughs> Good night, you two. Good night. Good night. Good night, my dear. I noticed, too. What? Like Mother, I've seen you drift off into your private little world. Is something wrong? No. You know, earlier on when you were standing up at the window, I came up behind you and with my arms around you, you got so startled. What goes on inside that private world of yours, Monica? What, what were you thinking about? Oh, it was nothing important. You also drifted away during the meeting on the cardiac wing. I've never seen you get so distracted. As a matter of fact, it wasn't one of our better meetings. Rick seemed to be out of it as well. Look, Alan, you've got to understand, it's uh, difficult. How do you mean difficult? Uh, shaking off the experience in the last few weeks. It's not something you can just do overnight. I mean, I seem to understand that. And you think that I don't? <laughs> Darling, please, I will give you all the time that you need. It's just that I get a little bit lonely when you drift off in yeah. that private world of yours. I'll always come back. You can count on that. And if love and devotion are what it takes, I will make you the happiest man in the world. How do you know I'm not the happiest man in the world right now? No, I mean it. I do, Alan, believe me. Darling, I never doubted you for one minute. Except possibly during my foolish phase when you convinced me that being jealous about something in your past was downright silly. Tell me, how did you ever put up with me through all that jealousy? I love you. When you love somebody, you can put up with almost anything. I'm sorry if I drift away. You'll pass. You know, I'm thinking, maybe change of scenery would help. I could see if I could get some time off and maybe go with Lila to Palm Beach and help her close up the house. Then I could help her open the house and be safe to her before she comes back to Edward. Go away. Now. What? Leave your adoring husband in our own new home? Well, it wouldn't be for very long. What is this crazy new urge that you've got to leave poor Charles? It's not an urge. I just, well, I'd like to help Lila. She's got an entire house full of servants to help her, and I only have one wife to love me and adore me. Oh, come on. It wouldn't Enough, be... Monica. I won't hear of it. Now, shall we go upstairs to bed? Come on. It's nice to have you back here like this where you belong. It's nice to be back. It only makes me all the more aware of... Be mind if I sound corny for a minute? <laughs> no, go ahead. You're the core of my life, Monica. Nothing has any meaning for me without you. That is not corny. That's beautiful. Do you feel as I do that our life has a new beginning, kind of, after a long separation? Yeah. You know, even making love to you somehow is, is new and is more exciting. I mean, you're the same wonderful woman, but there's, there's a new kind of excitement about you. Well, I won't bore you any more with any of my lunatic observations. You sleep well. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. How are things with both of you? A little bit hectic. My parents are in town. Really? Yes, of course you know them. Uh -huh. They said we must get together again while my mother's still here. Oh, I'd love to. But No, I... no, no buts whatsoever. We'll invite Rick and Leslie and you come along with them. It's absolutely set. All right, I guess. Uh, have things uh, straighten out for you and getting back to normal now that the quarantine's been Oh, sure. Hi. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hi. 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 
are you? Here you are in your office, right? Yes, yeah. I'll be with you in a minute. Would you uh, call Dr. McDonald's, please, Bobby, and tell him I'm here? Of course, Dr. Weber. Leslie, I'm having terrible trouble trying to pin down Rick. What night you two can come to dinner? We are. Schedule's been a little heavy lately. Yes, understandably, but Colleen's agreed to come whenever you and Rick can make it, so it's up to the two of you. It's fine with Monica any night you want. Right, darling? It'll be better in the next few days. My mother's going to be leaving for Palm Beach, and I know how much she wants to see the both of you. Dear, well, I, I hate to be rude, Alan, but I'm, I'm over an hour late for work already. Uh, I'm going to have to get back to you, Monica. Okay, fine. But do understand the Quartermains will not take no for an answer from the weathers this time. Uh, come on, Leslie. I'll uh, right up with you to the elevator. Okay, great. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Any messages? Sorry, but Alan wouldn't let up until I agreed to go to his place with you and Rick. It's okay. I haven't been doing very well at refusing his invitations lately either. I gather this isn't the first time he's asked you to make him over the place. Oh, hardly. He's been trying to get us all together for a combination meeting on the cardiac wing and dinner and rehearsal and quarantine. And for me, I don't know what happened that night between Alan and Rick. Forced into an uncomfortable situation just to save her neck. Why don't I have to just keep making excuses? No. I won't lie for her either. If she wants those invitations stopped as badly as I'm sure she does, she's going to have to be the one to discourage her husband, not me. Are you going to say that to her just the same way you said it to me? I certainly am. It's a very good idea. The very next time I see her. Never seen Leslie so jumpy and uptight. She must have noticed. Well, uh, she's probably yes. the same problem as most of us do. Just trying to adjust to the end of the epidemic. Yeah, but the time that she should have been jumpy was when Rick was locked up in here. Not now when he's back home and everything's normal again. Well, people react differently. Look, I'm going to grab that elevator. I'll be there. Bye bye. not the same as usual. At least you're still living under the same roof with Rick. Yeah. I was very worried about what Laura's reaction would be, so I tried to explain the situation to her last night. I hope you didn't tell her about Rick and Monica. Oh, no, goodness, no, of course not. Laura is very fond of Monica. There's no reason why her feelings have to change because of my situation. What did you tell her? She must have asked you some questions about the blow-up that night. She has asked me constantly since the morning Rick came home. I tell her it's something Rick and I have to work out for ourselves, and she shouldn't be concerned about that. I am sure Laura's not going to be t be content with that beating around the bush answer of yours. Don't say that, because if she ever found out the truth, it could destroy every semblance of security she has. With her. The horns. I went up to my office. I called my mother at the hotel, and she's going to arrange everything. Alan, tomorrow? I thought, what if they made other plans? Well, they'll have to change their plans, or, or miss the pleasure of our company. You know, this uh, was to be a business meeting, not just a party. That's right, that's why it's important for you to get to Rick as soon as possible to find out when he and Leslie can make it. All right, all right, I'll ask him, but I know he'll refuse. I'm sure he'll refuse if you ask him with that pessimistic look on your face. Use your winning ways, my dear. Use your charm. You know how to do that. I'll be at the office. Let me know. Monica, I've been looking all over for you. It has been so long since I've seen you. Oh, please. Thanks. I've really missed you. Me too, you. I talked to Scotty just the other day, and I told him to send my love to you. I hope he did. Yes, he did. Monica, we're still good friends, aren't we? Oh, of course. Good, I'm glad. Because there's been a lot of things going on at home that I really don't understand between my mom and dad. And I really need to talk to you and ask you a couple questions. Look, I, I'd love to try and help you, Laura. I mean, you must understand that. I, I just don't think I'm the person you should be talking to. Well, couldn't you just answer one question for me? Please, Monica. I've never needed your friendship as badly as I do right now. My timing is perfect, as always these days. You can't talk to Monica with Laura there. Oh, no, of course not. I'll wait until they've finished. And 
Come on, I can, I can have our little talk. <laughs> 